Hey guys, welcome to another day of some very powerful astrology activations in this month of March 2023 that is really characterized by a lot of very powerful alignments, transits, activations that we have going on. Today is another one of them. We have three planets lining up in the sign of Pisces at the exact same degree. The Sun, Mercury, Neptune. This triple conjunction is also going to be forming an exact square in the sky to Mars and Gemini. This is a mutable square going on that is comprised of four planets, three of them being personal planets. This is going to have a big impact on the energy as we're feeling it today. And it's not only that, you guys, we also have another exact square playing out simultaneously. This one in cardinal signs, Venus, 29 degrees of Aries, squaring Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Venus Pluto squares are always powerful in their own regard as well and create their own set of energetic dynamics that we're working with. This is happening at the 29th degree. This is about breakthroughs. This is about transitions. This is about breaking cycles and overcoming karmic patterns. Lots to talk about today, you guys. We are in a very, uh, tense energy today, but it is pushing for breakthroughs. It is pushing for growth. It is pushing for transition. Let's get into this report. Let's look at this energy, these two big squares in a little bit more detail and see how they may be impacting our experience on the ground today. <clears throat> Welcome back to my channel, you guys. Today is Thursday, March 16th, 2023. My name is Aubrey, and this is your astrological outlook of the day where we are narrating the shift of the ages. If you guys stick with me until the end of the report, we're also going to be looking at a collective tarot reading that I've done for us today as well. I really like to tap the energy field for more than one modality whenever I'm looking at this energy on a daily basis just to get uh, sort of a broader read of things that are playing out for us. We had a powerful reading come out today too, so if you're into that, you're going to want to stick with me till the end, but we're going to start with the astrology. I do want to preface this report today by saying, you guys, things are not necessarily as they appear. Um, this is a good day not to get uh, too caught up or like emotionally attached to what appears to be happening, what people appear to be saying, you know, what your perception appears to be. As we move through this week and head towards next week, how things are now, how they appear now, how they seem to be standing now is likely not to be uh, what they're looking like once we get into this new energy and things start to shift. So uh, this is a day that is dominated in a lot of ways by a very strong Neptunian Piscean energy, which has a tendency of distorting our perception of reality. And this energy is also being squared by Mars, which is has a lot to do with our self-perception in the sign of Gemini, okay? And uh, the efficiency of like our ideas and our thoughts and our actions. So there is an element today, and we've got these two big squares coming in, also Venus and Pluto. This could be a generally like more sort of like low vibe day. We could be questioning a lot about ourselves and our relationships and our experience. There could be a lot of like self-doubt and like feelings of like discouragement or like internalized sense of kind of wanting to like give up or something like that or just like feeling like maybe we don't have it within us or we'll never be good enough or something but again I want to say and I want to make it clear before I really get into all this energy though that is the illusion okay that is the illusion in this energy and a major purpose of this energy is actually to show us what's real and what's not when we get out of this energy. When we get out of this energy, we're going to be looking back at where we were at in this energy and be like, you know, okay, like that was a point in time when I was very detached from like the truth of what's actually going on in the situation. Even though as we may be going through this energy, it may appear to be, uh, you know, all that really matters and like the, the actual truth, okay? There is a major distortion that is coming through right now between what is real and what is not, you know, like fantasy and reality, sort of like fact and fiction, blurry lines, and it may be leaning to the more like pessimistic side of things. So just to start this report off, we are not taking our feelings today as fact 
okay. We are just observing them. We are allowing them to be a part of our experience, but we are not overly attaching to them and we are not identifying with any feelings of self-doubt or lack or like inability or whatever. Victimhood as well, maybe something that is coming up in this energy. We're seeing it, you know, we're acknowledging, but we're not attaching to it because we are understanding. And I'm actually, I actually find a tremendous amount of humor in the chart today, even though it is sort of this more uh, just like uncomfortable energy because it is like, it's all about moving us towards the new moon right now. And the symbolism is even like reassuring us and telling us exactly I want to start out this report today in terms of like really getting into this astrology by talking about the degree position of this triple conjunction that we have going on today between the sun, Mercury, and Neptune. Now, this is significant. We're going to be feeling this because the sun and Mercury, these are like, you know, some of the most like prominent frequencies that impact us. These are the personal planets. And when the sun and Mercury, the mind and the sun is like our level of vitality and like our, our consciousness and our spirit and like what makes us feel alive and stuff like that. When these two planets are being harshly or exactly impacted, a lot of times like our little frequency receptor antennas have a tendency of picking that up in some type of strong way. And it creates, you know, a more uh, tangible impact on our experience personal planets have a tendency of doing that. Those are the ones that are closest to the earth. They move the fastest and they're most connected to our personal experiences. Now, Neptune is an outer planet, but Neptune also, right, is this energy of spiritual connection and dreams and fantasies and ideals and like the highest possible capacity and like um, to the point of actually being able to merge back with like God and spirit and all that is, but it's also this distorting energy, brings illusions, it, um, it avoids things, it hides from things, it can manipulate things, and it's very, it detaches as well. It's very, very detached energy, very, uh, can be very avoidant, very like elusive. So we've got two distinct polarities and octaves that we're dealing with when we have the Pisces dynamic strong at play. This very spiritually connected, uh, highly aware and um, just like uh, unconditional love type of vibe. And then on the other hand, this just very uh, more so like avoidant and abstract and detached energy, escapism type energy. So we've got both of these octaves at play whenever we're dealing with strong Pisces energy. And therefore, in terms of our mind, the way our mind is working and with the sun there, like this is just likely to be a day where we're sort of more disconnected from reality. OK, and we will talk more about this in a minute. But I wanted to start by talking about the degree placement where this is happening itself. It's actually happening at like 25 degrees something minutes of the sign of Pisces. But in terms of the Sabian symbol placement, we always round up a degree. So we're looking at 26 degrees of Pisces. That Sabian symbol is a new moon, reveals that it's time for people to go ahead with their different projects. <laughs> so I'm sort of like chuckling at that because we have this very powerful new moon that's literally coming up on the 21st in like six days that happens to be aligning with the equinox this year and is happening at zero degrees of Aries, which is significant. It doesn't that it's kind of rare that that happens like that. The new moon in Aries does not always uh, line up with the equinox. The equinox, of course, is the first official day of spring. The new moon in Aries, this is our official beginning of the astrological lunar new year, our new energy natural new year, both aligning on the same day. To me, this is uh, speaking of a period of some very significant new beginnings and rebirth. And then literally like the day, a day or two after the new moon in Aries and equinox, Pluto moves into the sign of Aquarius. Pluto, the planet ruling death and rebirth as well. Mars will also be moving into the sign of Cancer. So, you know, we're heading towards a period over this next, after we get through the next six days, that is is going to really shift things in alignment with some brand new beginnings, some very fresh starts. And, you know, as we're going through this energy now, this alignment of planets in the sign of Pisces, Pisces is also about endings, right? It's the 12th sign of the zodiac. It's like um, where we reconnect to spirit to go through this whole new cycle, beginning with the sign of Aries of like growth and spiritual development. The Pisces cycle where we're at now, this is the last cycle in that lunar natural new year that begins with the new moon in Aries. 
Um, we're just, and we've got Pluto right now at 29 degrees of his sign. And then of course today we've also got the square going on with Venus at 29 degrees. So there's just so much energy right now that is pointing to like this being the end, like this being a transitional period, things falling away. This is also a big mutable square that's, uh, playing out. Mutable is all, mutable energy is all about change and transition and flow and adaptation. And then the, the position of this alignment itself is literally like verbatim referring to the new moon. A new moon reveals that it's time for people to go ahead with their different projects. That being said, just on face value, you guys, this is not the time to make decisions this week, to, you know, take big actions, make big choices, make big pitches, you know, really like do something significant to move things ahead. This is not that energy, uh, not with the square to Mars. This is um, energy that, again, is trying to kind of like bring us face to face with our fears and our doubts and our own self delusions and any like limiting mindsets that are actually a personal illusion of our own potential. Like as we move forward into this new energy, the light's going to come on, like the fire's going to get with, lit within us. We're going to come into a tremendously enhanced sense of self empowerment and we're going to overcome a lot of the things things that we're coming up against in this energy right now and we need to keep that in mind right as we're going through this energy it's all about um helping us to conquer and overcome some of the things that have held us back in the past through maybe bringing us into like direct alignment or direct awareness with them now but it's all about this new moon it's six days away we're gonna make it through most of what is playing out right now you guys is not even actually real okay it's like a smoke screen or it's just like a experience that we have to go through in order to actually like gain a greater sense of clarity gain a greater sense of understanding uh, all that type of stuff. So closing out multiple cycles of time right now, preparing for some very fresh starts and new beginnings with the new moon next week. That is going to be the time to go ahead with your different projects and energy today might be like quite tense. All right. But the direct guidance is once again, um, come the new moon, things are going to shift and it's going to be time to move forward. Now let's get into the specifics of this energy. Of course we have, like I've been talking about the sun, Mercury, Neptune aligning at 26 degrees. The new moon reveals it's time for people to go ahead with their different projects. Sabian symbol of that degree. If you can avoid the conflict today, guys, if you can avoid the drama, if you can like just take a step back and and not be consumed in illusions of weakness that might be coming through right now. This is a tremendous day to get in alignment and to get right with your inner vision about stuff. What do you want to create? What do you want to manifest? What are your greatest and your highest ideals for yourself? What, where are the stars that you're wishing upon? Venus, Mercury, Neptune, aside from the, you know, one hand octave of this. This is also tremendous manifestation energy with Saturn also in the sign of Pisces right now, bringing dreams, seeding dreams into reality. Again, talking about the new moon at this degree as well. Then what do we do on the new moon? The new moon is when we make our intentions. This is a seed planting time. This is where we seed the intentions for what we want to grow and develop over that cycle of time another way that this symbolism is guiding us in this energy today. Like I said, if we can detach our, if we're going to use detach, detachment and avoidance and escapism uh, in the context of this energy today, it needs to be from the illusion. It needs to be from the distortion of our own selves and our own strength and our own courage and our own potential that could be coming through today. And it's better for us to, uh, try to use this energy in alignment with what it is that we truly want to create for ourselves. If we're going to imagine something for ourselves, we need to be imagining our highest and our best and feeling it that way instead of our, again, like our weaknesses or our failures or our flaws and focusing in on that. We don't want to imagine ourselves into a reality that is based in our fears and our flaws instead of imagining ourselves into a reality that is based on our highest aspirations because we have the potential to do that at this point in time. The new moon degree is also talking about that and it also we're moving into this new moon in Aries where we're really going to be creating a new reality for ourselves. So we want to keep that in mind. Positive way to use this 
this energy. But regardless, even if we do find ourselves pulled more into like the negative octaves of this energy, like I've been saying, don't get discouraged. We've only got a few more days. Actually, I think it's five days. I don't even think it's six days. I think it's five more days uh, until the new moon and things will change. Five is also number of change, <laughs> reminding us like we're going to get through it. We're going to be okay. Again, most of it's like not even real. And in just a couple of days, things are going to switch dramatically. Now, again, this Mercury, Sun, uh, Neptune energy, not a lucid energy, very dreamy, very disconnected, irrational, sensitive. People are probably very sensitive, emotionally sensitive, very touchy. Of course, this is likely to be affecting, again, the mutable sign placements the most, uh, Pisces, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, you guys are in the conjunctions, oppositions, and squares to this square that's playing out. But it just disorienting us, um, this brain fog. People are probably going to be kind of tired today in like a weird like situation, like can't snap out of it, like not sleeping well. Also, I feel like people are generally not going to be sleeping well for a myriad of reasons, but things just generally like interfering with sleep throughout the course of this week kind of have people out of it. People are going to be kind of like avoiding and just like not super focused, not super mentally engaged. So something to keep in mind as you're dealing with other people, make sure that you are practicing like active listening and communicating and making sure that like if there's an important piece of information that needs to be relayed that you're treating this like mercury retrograde energy because that's sort of how it's operating and making sure that the person on the other side of that communication knows what your intentions are, what you're saying, and can like repeat that back to you. That will probably be helpful and avoid some errors and mistakes that could lead to like conflict or just issues in this energy. It is tremendous energy though, you guys, I will tell you for any type of creative writing, art, music, daydreaming, fantasizing, again, manifest manifesting in alignment with like our mind's eye and our like true hopes and wishes and aspirations for ourselves. Um, not a great day for understanding things though, or for being reasonable or for being rational about things, high idealism, high romanticism, and seeing what is not truly there. People looking at things through rose colored glasses, people refusing to face the truth about things, lots of conflicts going on between beliefs about things and like actual facts and information, cognitive dissonance, huge right now, people projecting out huge right now as well. This energy with this, these three planets in the square to Mars and Gemini is creating an inherent sense of like internalized vulnerability in a lot of people. And uh, Neptune, Pisces, this is about projection. Mercury there, this is about projection. The sun as well, this is about projection. People are going to be placing the things that they can't deal with within themselves on other people and situations in their lives. Don't be surprised if you find yourself being like accused of something from someone that you know is doing exactly what they're accusing you of doing. Like that's just sort of how this energy is operating. People refusing to look at the truth of themselves uh, and therefore like shoving it, projecting it outwards and like putting it on somebody else. So if you find yourself in that experience, again, pay it no mind, right? We're not attaching. We're not allowing ourselves to get carried away emotionally. We're not... <laughs> We are not allowing other people's thoughts, opinions, judgments of us in this energy to become our identity, okay? We are not wearing uh, whatever other people are designing for us out there because a lot it's going to be most likely a distortion of whatever they're refusing to deal with or look at within themselves. And there is no reason at all, especially in all this Neptune energy that we should be internalizing or attaching to anybody else's like weird uh, issues that they have going on that they're not wanting to deal with in this energy. Our job is, you know, introspection, self-analysis. We've still got Jupiter and Chiron together in the sign of Aries, T like being self-motivated and taking the initiative to heal ourselves, to work on ourselves, to heal our wounds, to release our states of victimhood, to forgive, to transcend, to move on, to alchemize, to master these experiences. Uh, other people's, whatever they got going on literally uh, has nothing to do with us. And we're, we're going to we're going to proceed in such a way. OK, so there is this very, very, very strong artistic, musical, creative energy. Very good right now as well. Also, though, this strong desire to escape reality. I'm going to say and I'm very serious about this. I strongly recommend against uh, overindulging in any type of drugs or alcohol. <laughs> I mean, well, you know, generally, that's not something that you ever want to do. But while 
specifically Saturn is transiting the sign of Pisces over this next couple of years. And also specifically right now when we have this energy going on, um, it just could get bad consequences. Like there's just a greater likelihood of more severe consequences for overindulging as an escapism tactic and drugs and alcohol at this point in time. Highly advising against it. Also, be very careful driving. Be very careful in traffic, operating dangerous equipment, heavy machinery, especially um and when with your hands also in like blades and hot objects, fire, especially Mercury dominant people, Virgos and Gemini's with Mars in the sign of Gemini making this square. Be careful of like not paying attention and like cutting yourself, especially especially like hands and arms and fingers and stuff like that. So word of caution there. And then um Gemini also rules like traffic and short distance trips and people just could be not paying attention zoning out on their phone just disoriented didn't get any sleep like a million reasons why people are sort of in a brain fog or just dazed and confused or not paying attention but we need to be aware of that because that is a definite um indication in this energy as well also i've been talking about this the past couple days these breakdowns in information communication this energy really is sort of like mercury retrograde energy and also like literally breaking things literally like damage to specifically like communication devices or uh you know computers tablets phones like stuff like that or losing them as well with the pisces energy losing or breaking things that we use to communicate we want to be careful with that and also by water by way of water damage by water with the pisces energy so take extra precaution and extra care with your devices today you guys as well um and then the whole ideological battle situation that is also being represented by this transit I was taught I've been talking about this all week as well um clashes and fights over ideas beliefs philosophies ideologies and overly identifying with our ego like feeling like our feelings are facts and therefore if you are insulting my feelings or insulting my thoughts or being critical or judgmental of my thoughts or my ideas then you are actually lodging an attack against me and therefore I must respond and be very defensive with equal intensity like that could be a lot of people's like thought processes Processes. We're talking about egos being super hyper triggered, clashes of egos, clashes of wills, the sun ruling the self and ruling our life force and ruling our ego on one hand, and then Mars also ruling our energy and ruling our ego and ruling like our personal personhood and all of that on the other hand, coming into the exact square today. And one of them, and then, then, then they're just like Neptune influence. It's like distorting our ability to like control what's coming out of our mouth. People could be saying some really crazy stuff today, you guys. Bizarre <laughs> bizarre things conversations um because again like neptune adds this weird flavor and we've got mercury this is our speech this is what we're talking about this is what's coming out you know this is what we're saying and the interactions that we're having so this opportunity for like these weird uh like just conversations going on and then also forming the square to Mars in the sign of Gemini who is ruled by Mercury who's also in the square just some some strange or bizarre conversations that are just sort of like disorienting us or like I don't know. People could be acting quite crazy. I'm going to say that people could be acting quite crazy in this energy. And there could again, they're like, over people are going to be like overly attached to their ideas and their beliefs and how they feel about things. And other people are going to be like, but there's this new information and we should be looking at things from this perspective in light of this context or this data or these facts. And people are just gonna be like, no. And then it, you know, it's just an opportunity for battles of narratives, uh, information wars, and just conflicts, fights, arguments, debates over things having to do with thoughts, ideas, beliefs, philosophies about stuff like that. So we've got that going on as well, this ideological battles, clashes of wills, and based off ideas and beliefs. People attaching to old beliefs on one hand, and then people attaching to new information on the other hand. Both of these sort of at odds with each other coming head to head. So this is why there's a potential for conflict along those lines. Now, like I said, we have um, the Pisces planets, the Pisces stellium, 26 degrees of Pisces, that Sabian symbol, again, a new moon 
moon reveals it's time for people to go ahead with their different projects mars at 26 gemini this sabian symbol is winter frost in the woods so this square this mutable square that is breaking us through into some type of transition into some type of change conflict breakthrough transition and rebirth that is the trajectory that this energy is moving us towards but what we're breaking through or what we're breaking into mars is melting the ice right that has kept us crystallized perhaps in like a certain state of being or a certain mindset in the sign of gemini so that we can move forward to start something new now remember mars in the sign of gemini mars is ruling this new moon in aries that is going to be coming up in this next five days so the information that we're gaining now or the conversations that we're having or what we're breaking through or what is falling away or the arguments or the conflicts or whatever this energy is bringing to us is related to actually somehow assisting us in our new adventure side of Aries as we pioneer in this rebirth and these brand new fresh starts and these big shifts that are coming up over this next couple of weeks. So, you know, I feel like this energy is bringing up everywhere we've been sort of disillusioned or misunderstanding, like even our own selves and our current reality so that we can get a clear idea of what we can really do moving forward. And like I said, this is not the only big square that we have going on today. We also have a very powerful square going on between both Venus and Pluto at 29 degrees. This very critical transitional degree also of their signs. This is another breakthrough energy, okay? This is another coming to the end of a way of being energy, of a karmic phase in terms of what we were surrendering power to out of any sense of lack internally, what we were sacrificing in order, in order to feel loved, in order to feel valued, in order to feel worthy, in order to have have some type of financial abundance or security. Not anymore, you guys. Not happening anymore. Breakthrough energy, where we've been selling ourselves short, where we've been attached to things that were toxic or that were hurting us out of any internalized sense of lack of any kind. Lack of power, lack of worth, lack of value, lack of love. Part of the brainwashing or the past paradigm that we are cracking out of now has a lot to do with this dynamic as well and us really recognizing on some deep internal levels that a lot of the illusions maybe that we've been operating under that have kept us from being able to be more effective and feel like stronger and more powerful in our own experience may have had a lot to do with where we were surrendering power out of any lack that we held inside and what we were willing to sacrifice in order to superficially or externally fill those voids within us. But we're just coming to a point where we're just done, done, done with those situations. We are taking back our power, breaking addictions, leaving toxic relationships, putting an end to cycles of emotional um, dependency and abuse that we may have been accepting because we were afraid to do it on our own or we didn't think we could as a result of perhaps these personal illusions that we've been operating under. You see how it all fits together? So again, like this energy, the square may be bringing us kind of face to face with with some of these more um, toxic attachments, okay, that we've been dealing with or that we've been involved with, but the same as the Neptune, <laughs> Sun, Mercury, um, Mars square, this is also trying to give help us gain a greater awareness so that we can bring ourselves to the end of this cycle so that we can come to the point where we're finally done where we're finally ready to walk away as a result remember jupiter and chiron are still in a conjunction in aries there is a huge magnified intensified expanded um energetic ability right now for us to just inherently overcome some of the previous states of victimhood that have been existing within us that process as well is what is contributing to this 29 degree venus pluto square and us finally releasing ourselves from some of these um heart-based pains and wounds and traumas of the past that may have contributed to us being in these states where we are connecting to things that were stealing our power and not recognizing our truth and our values so you know 
It could honestly be a low vibe day. We may not be feeling all that great today. We also have the Capricorn moon going on. That's not necessarily helping much either. We want to not be too overly self-critical. Like I said, we don't want to get attached to any feelings of like insignificance or self-doubt or you know, self-abandonment or escapism or, you know, I'll never be good enough or I'll never make it or like any of that type of stuff. We don't want to get attached to that in that this energy. You know, we can feel it. We can experience it. But like we have to realize like that's not the truth. That's not who we really are. That's just a smoke stream that's coming through today to see if we can see through it or if we were we will continue to fall into the trap of creating that reality for ourselves by assuming that that is the reality when in fact it's really just the illusion. So, you know, the moon in Capricorn, this is could be a bit of a heavier vibe as well. The moon in Capricorn, though, will be making an exact trine to Uranus today. This is electrifying. This is awakening um, emotion, on an emotional level. So aside from the other energy playing out today, there could just be this like internalized sense of awareness or awakening or greater level of understanding or a uh, desire to free ourselves from something as well that is coming through on an intuitive level. Kind of glum, spaced out energy. Not a good day. Like I said, not a good week for decisions, choices, important conversations or communication taking decisive action. This is a great day for wrapping things up, uh, putting, you know, periods and exclamation points on the end and getting things in a row, preparing to move forward in some way. We're not taking things on face value. We're not getting emotionally attached. We're not getting carried away by things. Um, it's mostly an illusion to show us what we're not, okay? Uh, keywords today, release, change, letting go, moving on, healing and growth, uh, faith in the universe, hope for the future. Again, this conflict leading to these breakthroughs, leading to this transition, leading to this rebirth phase that is coming up in these next couple of days. Don't get pulled into the drama today, you guys. Don't get pulled into the false narratives. We're breaking the spell. We're destroying the illusion. We're breaking the chains on our minds and on our hearts right? Mercury, Mars in this energy with Neptune in the sun and also Venus and Pluto. Both our mind and our hearts are working to be freed and liber liberated from the conditioning of the past, preparing us for this spiritual rebirth with the new moon that is corresponding with the equinox on the 21st that is coming up next week. So that's what I have to say about the astrology today, you guys. Um, again, it is one of these just more significant days in it's just an, it's a big astrology day okay obviously we've got a triple conjunction and exact square to mars but you know this month of march is just a big month generally and this day is one of the reasons why so let's talk about the tarot now for a minute like i said in the beginning we got a pretty powerful tarot message coming out today which i'm not surprised about because the energy as it's hitting today is really trying to get the job done, okay? Trying to get things wrapped up, trying to get the job done. The first card we got coming out today was the emperor, all right? The truth is, what is the truth? The truth is the state of self-empowerment that we are moving towards. Just because we may be facing our own illusions today, you guys, doesn't mean that that's the reality. The reality is this. The emperor is also associated with the sign of Aries. We're talking about the new moon in Aries. So don't forget today, despite the projections, despite the feelings, despite the whatever, you're really... Okay, you really have the power, and as we move forward, it's going to become a much more palpable experience. The next card we have coming out is the Eight of Cups, followed by the Death card. This is, to me, talking about this period of emotional release, emotional transformation that we are going through right now. On the back of the deck, we've got the High Priestess, okay, followed by the Six of Pentacles. To me, this is talking about uh, a higher power underway right now, influencing things from a higher level, orchestrating a higher plan to rebalance things, to rectify things, to put things back in proper order. We need to trust our faith today. We need to realize the high priestess. This is also a card about like obscureness and mystery and illusion and it can rule like our fears and, you know, very Neptunian in its influence. Also Piscean energy. So very strong spiritual influence today. Um, 
but we don't want to get caught up in the illusion. We don't want to get caught up in the what ifs or in the self doubt or, you know, we want to get, like I said, if we're going to get caught up in something, we want to get caught up in the visions of greatness that we have for ourselves moving forward. This is a time moving us towards a time of self-empowerment, but it is requiring us to walk away from our previous conceived notions of ourselves. Also, any misconceptions, any illusions that we've been operating under in regards to our own power, death, rebirth, and transformation, you guys, and the Six of Pentacles. It's rebalancing the skills, justice restored, putting things back in proper order um, so that they can go through this phase of organic growth as we head towards the age of Aquarius and um, our paradigm shift. So that's what I have to say in terms of the tarot cards today. Just these times of transformation, times of letting go, times of transition, times of moving on, uh, death and rebirth process for the purpose of showing us the truth of our power. Pluto entering the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius is the sign of the individual, but it's also the sign of the whole in humanity. Pluto is power in all of its forms the individual and the collective of humanity empowered this is where we're going okay with the new moon in aries so no fears no doubts uh only faith trust belief things are going in the right direction okay let's grab one more card now synchronicity card god spirit universe what do we need to know what what will benefit us to remember to keep in our minds as we are going through, oh, that's so weird. That's the second day in a row the no card flipped out. So we've got no, if you guys are pondering something. Again, I feel like this is in yesterday when the no card came out, the card that we had come out after that was the wait card. Again, this is not the time to act. This is not the time to decide. This is not the time to move forward with things. That is coming with the new moon in Aries. So if there's a question that you've been, you know, on the fence about as you're watching this video, that might be for you as well. Let's get, uh, what, what, what do we, what advice do we need though? What is our mantra for today? Okay. We actually have two coming out today and I feel like they're both super appropriate. The first one says, rest, relax, and believe. Okay. He feedeth among the lilies until the day breaks and the shadows flee away. Song of Solomon 2, 16 through 17. Take refuge among the lilies of God and heaven and dwell upon the concepts of joy, harmony, peace, beauty, and divine law and order. All your plans, journeys, and undertakings will prosper. Continue in this abiding trust and faith in God until the day breaks and the shadows flee away we've just got to make it through this next five days until the day breaks the equinox comes the new moon in Aries comes the return of the Sun and the shadows flee away and then ironically enough the next card that we have is you will prosper and one of the lines in this card I just read specifically says all your plans journeys and undertakings will prosper so again you guys like I've been saying this whole report, we are not getting caught up in the illusion of what is not that may be presenting right now. We're going in the right direction and you will prosper. Who is it that engaged his heart to approach unto me, saith the Lord, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 30, 21. Know that you have love in your heart as well as emotions. Turn to God within. Fill your heart with love and faith and confidence in the one power of God and everything you do will prosper. This is to me like the same sort of message twice, which again, this faith in the universe, God and the divine, and this hope for the future and not allowing ourselves to be pulled into the negative octaves of the energy. If we're going to be immersed in the spiritual Pisces energy, we might as well tap into the unconditional spiritual love that is available for us as well and surrender the burden surrender the things that we can't control right saturn in the sign of pisces that's what saturn wants from us with the trust and the faith that things are working in our direction in our for our best interest things are not as they appear right now and you know as long as we don't 
allow ourselves to attach to these vibrations of victimhood and lack that we're supposed to be overcoming right now. Everything is going to move in our direction. The universe is conspiring in our favor, you guys. So that's what I have to say today. Message from the stars, message from the cards. I hope you guys liked it. If you did like it, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, you guys. Share it with your friends if you think they would like this type of astrology content as well, if they'd be into this. Leave me comments. So grateful for all of you. Thank you so much for being here. If you guys are having experience, that are lining up with these transits are coming through please drop them in the comment section below I love knowing what's going on with you as well I have a Facebook page a Facebook group uh, Instagram some other social stuff in my description box below if you guys want to join my Facebook group I write a blog every day that I post over there as well I also post short content over there as well if you're interested in any of that um, and come back with me tomorrow you guys we will have our weekend report to talk about we've got lots more energy coming at us this weekend shifts underway Venus and Mercury are actually both changing signs this weekend so that's going to be shifting the vibe kind of significantly for us as well and I will be here to talk about it you should be here too you don't want to miss it so I will see you then guys have a beautiful day and until tomorrow bye